Section 11.3 is on arithmetic sequences and series. So yes, it is arithmetic. I did not mispronounce arithmetic. <laughs> so arithmetic sequences and series. So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence um, whose consecutive terms have a common difference. Okay, so an example of an arithmetic sequence would be something like 1, 4, 10, oops, not 1, 4, 10, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. Do you guys see what we're doing there in that sequence? What are we adding each time? 3. 3 is what we call the common difference in that case, okay? So ways that we could get that 3, the way that most textbooks talk about is they say that the common difference is any term, so let's say a sub 2, minus the term before it. So I could do a sub 3 minus a sub 2. I could do a sub 4 minus a sub 3. Or really anything. Okay, so let's test it. So if I took the number 13 and I subtracted out the one before it, 13 minus 10 is 3. What if I took the 10 and I subtracted out the one before it? 10 minus 7 is 3. Now, is that the easiest way to find the common difference, though? No, you guys knew what that common difference was right away because we said, what do we do to get from the first term to the next term? We added 3. That's the easiest way to get the common difference. Just kind of look at it and say, how do I adjust? So common differences can be positive or negative. Give me an example of a sequence where I have a negative common difference. Anybody? If I had 1, maybe negative 3, 1, negative 3, negative, what would be the next one? Close, negative 7, I'm subtracting 4, right, if I start with 1. Does that make sense? So I subtract each time. All right, so it says determine whether or not the sequence is arithmetic. If so, find the common difference. So is this next one an arithmetic sequence? What am I adding each time or subtracting each time? I'm subtracting 4, so my common difference should be 4. Is it always 4? Yeah, so yes, it's arithmetic, and my common difference is negative 4. So it says find a formula for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence whose common difference, so d is 2, and whose first term is 7. So the way we've been writing the first term is a subscript 1, so a1 is 7. Let's write a few terms and see what we get. So if I start with 7 and I'm adding 2 each time, what will my next term be? 9. If I add 2, 11. If I add 2, 13. And so on. That's my sequence. So I need to come up with some kind of equation to get them. Christian, do you have a guess? Um, a Close. Okay, so he's saying a sub n equals a, oh, yeah, like a recursive sequence. Yes, that would work. So this is a recursive one. Do you guys remember a recursive sequence? Okay, let's get an explicit one, an explicit sequence, or explicit formula. So I want to do a sub n, and I want to have n in the formula. I see some of you guys thinking. Um, yeah, you got another guess? 2 to the n plus 7. 2 to the n plus 7. Mm, kind of close. It's not 2 to the n, though. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. 2 times n. 2 times n, yes. Okay, good. Because 2 is involved. Yep, it involves that. Okay, so let's let's start with, do you guys see where he's having the 7? Let's start with our first term. So let's say 7. So our first number is 7. How many times, so let's say if I want to get to the, if I want to start with the first term, 7. And let's say I want to get to the fourth term. How many times do I have to add that common difference to get there? Three times. You guys see that? So if I want to get to the fourth term, I needed three swoops. I call them swoops. Isn't that a nice technical term that should be in every math book? Totally. All right, so I'm adding three swoops to get to it. What do you think if I was trying to get to the 20th term? How many swoops do you think I'd have to add? 19. So if I'm trying to get to the nth term, how many times am I adding on two? n minus 1, exactly. So I'm going to use that. So I'm going to do 7 plus n minus 1 of those common differences of 2. Now we're just going to simplify it. So I'm going to say a sub n is equal to 7 plus 2n minus 2, which is a sub n equals 2n plus 5. So that's my guess, my hypothesis. 
the math, right? So this is what I'm thinking it might be. So let's test it. Do you guys remember how in the last section I had you guys list out the first four terms by doing, you don't have to write this, but a1, a2, a3. So if I wanted to find the first term, I plug in 1 for n. 2 times 1 plus 5, what do we get? 7. Is that the first term? Yep. Let's say I plug in 2. What do I get? 9. Yep. What if I plug in 3? What do I get? Yeah, I get 11. Does it work? Mm -hmm. Totally. So that's our... Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a pattern. Okay? And there's equations that help you relate these to each other. Okay? So the equation that is in every single math book looks like the following. So it says the nth term of an arithmetic sequence has the form a sub n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So if I want to start with the first term, and I want to go to the 90th term, how many of the swoops, very technical term, how many common differences am I adding to get there? 89. So it would be set up, don't write this, but a90 equals a1 plus 89 of those common differences. That's how we would set it up. Easy enough? But the thing that I get frustrated about, so, you know, I said every textbook uses d and a sub 1 and so on, and it comes up with this formula. But the thing that's frustrating for me is I want you guys to know the formula without using that formula. I want you to know what it means. So sometimes I don't go from the first term to the 90th term. Sometimes I start in the middle. Sometimes I start with the 15th term, and I'm trying to get to the 30th term. Well, let's do a different one. 15th. Let's say I start with the 15th term, and I'm trying to get to the 100th term. So if I start with the 15th term, and I'm trying to get to the 100th term, can you come up with an equation that relates those two? A sub 100, the 100th term. How do I get there? I start with what? The 15th term. And how many swoops, how many common differences do I add? I hear 84, I hear 86, I hear 85. It's 85. And this is where I lose my students because they're like, well, what about that n minus 1? And they're like, what happened to that n minus 1, Mrs. Cox? I should have subtracted 1. It should be 84. Everybody always thinks it's 84. Yeah. Yeah, look at these subscripts. So if I have 15 and I'm trying to get to 100, I need to add 85 swoops to get there. Are these subscripts okay? If I start with the first term and I add on 89, do I get 90? Yeah, so the key is with the subscripts. So the first term, I add 89 to get 90. Okay, it makes sense. So don't just memorize the one formula, know how they're related. Okay, so let's try these. So it says find the sixth term of the arithmetic sequence that begins with 15 and 12. So if I have a1 is 15 and I have a sub 2 is 12, this is a pretty darn easy question to put on the test. Don't you hope that everyone is like this on the test? Because really, I could just say 15, 12, and I could say, oh, I know my common difference. It's negative 3. And I just asked you for the sixth term. Is that hard? No, you could just be like, okay, now I have 9, and then 6, and then 3, and then 0. Ding, 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 my answer is 0. All of us can do that. And I had a student several years ago who was like, oh, I'm just always going to do it that way. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to put the 1,001st term on the test. <laughs> and I did. I put the 1,001st term on the test, and she got an A on it. She understood the concept in the end, but she wanted to check it every single time by listing out all those terms. You can do whatever you want. You can list them out if you want to, but let's know the concept. Let's know how to do this. So if I'm trying to go from the first to the second term, and I'm trying to get the, well, the first to the second gives us our common difference, which is negative 3. We can see that. And I want to get to the sixth term. Then I write an equation involving a sub 6. I can start with the first term. I can start with the fourth term, or the second term. It doesn't matter. So let's say I start with that first term. How many common differences do I add to get to the sixth? Five. Do you guys see how the 1 and the 5 combine to be 6? So my a sub 6 is equal to the first term, which was 15, plus 5 of the negative 3s. So I end up getting a sub 6 equals 0. That's my answer. Much easier just to list them out in that case. 
So let's say we have the 20th term. So if I start out with 2 and 9, that means I'm adding what each time? 7, right? So my common difference is 7. So if I'm trying to get to the 20th term, it doesn't matter where I start. I can start with that first term or the second term. Let's say I start with the first term. How many swoops do I need? 19, right? Do you guys see it? So we set it up. So the 20th term is going to be a sub 1, which is 2, added to 19 of the 7. I always write that first equation. I always write a sub 20 equals a1 plus 19. And if you do that, I think it will make a lot of sense as you're doing it. You'll be like, oh, I see where this is coming from. All right, so 19 times 7, well, 20 times 7 is 140, so minus 7, so 133. And then plus 2, mm -hmm. so our answer is 135. All right, so the next one, the fifth term of the arithmetic sequence is 190. And the tenth term is 115. So now we don't have that first term. Okay, so we always have to come up with some kind of equation that relates the things that I was given. I was given the fifth, fifth and the tenth term. So if I'm relating those two to each other, I say, okay, well, if I start with the fifth term and I'm trying to get to the tenth term, my tenth term is going to be my fifth term plus how many swoops? 5D. Now, you don't have to always write it this way. Like, you guys could write the a sub 5 plus 5D equals a sub 10, or some people get fancy and say things like a sub 10 minus 5 common differences gives me a sub 5. You can do that as well. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do. I try to be very consistent. I try to kind of write it the same way. So my 10th term is 115. My 5th term is 190. That finds the common difference for me. Some of you guys are going to be bright enough to do that without writing an equation. Because you're thinking, okay, if I go from the fifth term to the tenth term and I go from 190 to 115, I'm subtracting out how much? And then how many swoops did I have? Five. So you divide by five and you get negative 15. So some of you guys can do that. That's totally fine. Uh, not quite, I think. You're going the opposite way. So now if you're trying to get the first term, start with either one. I usually start with the one that's kind of closer to it, the fifth term. doesn't matter. So if I have the fifth term, I have a sub 1 plus how many swoops? 4. Yep, and we just fill in. So a1 is going to be the one we're trying to find. My common difference is negative 15, and a sub 5 is 190. So I have 190 equals a sub 1 minus 60. And I add that 60 over, so I get 250. So the first term is 250. Okay, does it make sense? And does it make sense that it's like bigger than those two numbers? Yeah, because our common difference was a negative number, right? We're getting smaller each time. Okay, you guys see where we're going with this stuff? All right, so number four. So it says the seventh term of an arithmetic sequence is negative 5, and the 27th term is negative 125. Find the 18th term of the sequence. So we're going to relate, we're going to write an equation relating the two that we were given. So we were given that the seventh term is negative 5, and the 27th term is negative 125. So if I start with the seventh term and I'm trying to get to the 27th, I'm going to add on 20 common differences to get to that 27th term. So the 27th term was negative 125. The seventh term was negative 5. Add 5, add 5. So I get negative 120 equals 20D. So I get d is equal to negative 6. Now 
now that we have our common difference, our question says, well, now let's find the 18th term. So which one's closer? I don't know, 7 or 27? They're both pretty close, right? So it doesn't matter. You can use whichever one. So let's say I use the seventh term. We'll use the one that's a little further away this time. So if I use the seventh term, how many common differences do I need to add to it? 11. Do you guys see it? So the 18th term is what we want. The seventh term was negative 5, and our common difference was negative 6. So I get negative 5 plus negative 66, so I have negative 71. Making sense? Yeah, Elise? Um, so the yeah, it's like 7 and 11 are what's combining to be 18. So I was telling people, kind of write that equation above. So like 18 minus 7. Yeah, 18 equals 7 plus 11, yeah. And that kind of helps people set it up. All right, so it says, it says, suppose you have the sequence 12, 18, 24, 30. What term is the number 96 in the sequence? So this would be another one that you could do by hand. Like you could list them out and say 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, and keep listing them out until you got the number 96. Not a big deal. But what this is saying is our common difference is 6. A sub n equals 96. So what is n? What number, like what, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. What uh, term is it? What, how, many, how many places do I have to go out to get to that 96 number? So I set it up and I'm like, okay, well I know that if I'm trying to get a sub n, I can start with the first term and add on n minus one of those swoops of the common differences. That's that basic formula that I told you was in every textbook. So if I want to get 96, I start with the number 12, and I add on n minus 1 of the 6s. Now this is just a basic algebra formula that you guys learned in Algebra 1, right? So we're going to get 12 plus 6n minus 6 equals 96. So 6 plus 6n equals 96. Subtract the 6 over, so I get 90 equals 6n. So n is then equal to 15. So 15 is the answer. Okay, those ones are kind of different. I think I just added those to the notes this year. They're different than what we, the normal ones, I guess. All right, so let's talk about that Gauss formula again. So remember, Gauss is that mathematician that added up the numbers 1 through 100. So if you remember, he had 1, 2, 3, 98, 99, 100. And he said, okay, there's 100 numbers in the list, so I'm going to find the number of pairs. Well, what if I had the digits A1, A2, A3, not digits, but the, the terms, and I went all the way to the nth term? How many total numbers would I have on that list? N. How many pairs of numbers then? So I'd have N numbers. N divided by 2 for the pairs, yeah. And what are we adding? So each of them sum to be what? Each pair sums to be A1 plus A sub N. So 1 plus 100 for Gauss, right? But what about if I have just this generic A1 to AN? So if I add those together, it's A1 plus A sub N. So there's a formula that we use all the time, and it comes from Gauss. What it says is if I want to add up n numbers in a list, so that's what s of n means, the sum of the first n numbers, I take the number of pairs and I multiply by the first added to the last, a1 plus a sub n. So n, whoops, <laughs> I can't write. n over 2 is the number of pairs, and this a1 plus a sub n is our first added to last. So when it says find the 16th partial sum, what that means is find the sum of the first 16 digits, 16 numbers. I have digits on my mind, like pi day or something, I don't know. So of the arithmetic sequence, 0, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and so on. So we could list out the first 16 numbers and then just add them together, not a big deal. Or we can use this formula. 
So if I have 16 numbers, how many pairs do I have? Eight. So I take my 16 and I divide by two. That's my number of pairs. And then I do my first number, which is zero. Let me write a sub one for now. Add it to my last number, which will be the 16th number in the list. So I'm good. I got the eight. I got a one is zero. But then the question mark, I don't know what a sub 16 is. So it's like, oh crap, how do I find that? Haven't we been doing that this whole section? <laughs> Can we find the, six, the 16th one? So that's where we go over here. We're like, okay, well, if I want the 16th term, I can start with the first term, and I can add on 15 common differences. So my 16th term is going to be 0 added to 15 of the common difference 12. So we end up getting 180, and we plug that in. So we're like 8 times 0 plus 180. So I have 8 times 180, which is, what is it? <laughs> no. 8 times 180, I thought it was 1440, okay. <laughs> so 1440, that's the sum of the first 16. Okay, does that make sense? All right, I'm going to hold you one minute over and you're going to cry, but I'm trying to make up for when we had that one bad teacher <laughs> came in. So if I have four, I shouldn't say that, four, eight, 12, 16, 400, 404. Okay, how many numbers do we have in this list? Ethan, can you kind of close that door, please? Yeah, so think about, this is four times one, this is four times two, four times three. What's the last one? Four times 101. So we have 101 numbers. Okay, you would think that Gauss's formula doesn't work for this because you don't have an e like a nice number of pairs, right? It actually does. Yeah, you could take off the last one. Yeah, you could take off the last one or take off the first one and then do it that way. Yeah, you could. And yeah, you could add zero to the front. That would per be perfect too. But it doesn't matter. Gauss's formula actually works even if you have 101 numbers. So the sum of those 101 numbers ends up being 101 over 2. And then we're going to do the first number, which is 4, added to the last number, which is 404. So we're going to have 50.5 times 408. So we get the lovely 20,604. I don't know. I was thinking about the next problem, which is, has to do with money. So I don't know why I put a dollar sign there. So yeah, the, the next problem has kind of an application. So Manish, it's your car dealership. <laughs> so Manish owns a car dealership. Do you know the one person at University High School that actually owns a car dealership? One uh, faculty member? John Walls. Yeah, John Walls. I bought both my cars from John Walls. Who knew? My kids love him because they think that he just gives us cars. But in this problem, basically, um, he's adding 1400 each year. So your D is 1400 And it's saying, what is the sum of those first nine years? So we'll skip that one, um, but let me give you your 